welcome to another episode of Breakcast Gaming Talk. This is a first time for me, a first time that I've gotten to play the widely hyped in its day Halo 2. Yes, this is the only Bungie Halo title that I have not played until now. Now, this is going to be mostly about Halo 2 Anniversary, which has finally joined the Master Chief Collection on PC, but I'm also going to be talking about what I think they might do with Halo 3 and probably rehash again that Halo 5 should also come to PC. But first, we do need to talk about Halo 2 Anniversary on PC, which I have finally gotten to play. One more thing is that I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the campaign only because I don't play multiplayer. So, what did I think about the Halo 2 Anniversary campaign? From the first cutscene, I was 100% impressed with it. But, after playing it, I have some complaints about the campaign. The cutscenes look beautiful and there's so much interesting things going on with the story. I love that we get to play as Master Chief and see what's going on with the UNSC, but I also love playing as the Arbiter and seeing what's going on with the Covenant. You get to see how blowing up that Halo Ring in Combat Evolve affected the Covenant and how the Arbiter gets turned into a symbol of failure in front of everybody. On the flip side, the Master Chief is being praised as the savior of Earth, and it's just such a contrast, and it's pretty awesome. Even though you play as both sides, you both have the goal of getting the index that belongs to another Halo ring, Delta Halo. As a Covenant, you want it so you can deliver to the Prophets who plan to use it even though they don't want to tell the Covenant that. Of course, as Chief, your plan is to stop the Covenant from getting the index and activating Delta Halo. There is something deeper on the Covenant side too. In the Gravemind mission, you are thrust into a Covenant capital, I think it's called High Charity, and you're Master Chief in the middle of the Brutes wiping out all of the Elites because the Elites betrayed the entire Covenant. That's something you've never gotten in Combat Evolve. The Covenant were just the bad guys that you must kill. During the campaign, you kill one of their prophets. A cutscene in which the grave mine, in the Grave Mine mission shows another prophet lets the third prophet get killed by one of those flood infection forms. The chief brute was ready to peel that flood form off the prophet, but the other prophet told the brute to leave the prophet to die. It really is a great story, even with the classic cliffhanger ending. Now, to get into what I didn't like about the campaign, that has to do with what it's like to play the campaign, not the story that they are trying to tell. First, the Flood are still annoying as fuck, and they don't fucking die. Okay, it really depends on the weapon you're using. I found that the Shotgun, SMG, and Energy Sword are the best weapons against the Flood. I try using the Battle Rifle once, and it took like three magazines of ammo before the damn thing finally died. I know that the Flood are in Halo 3 because I played that one years ago, and it doesn't make them any less annoying. The second thing is those goddamn sentinel drones. Like, there's parts of this campaign where you have floods surrounding you and those sentinel drones swarming you in the air because they're shooting the flood and me. It doesn't help that some of the flood have energy swords and can kill you in like three hits. Just the combination of flood and sentinel drones are annoying. The third thing is that the brutes are terrible, they suck, and there's nothing positive about them. They are built to take a ton of damage, and take even longer than Flood to kill. It doesn't help that if you get them angry enough they charge you, and that makes them even more difficult to kill. I found the best weapons for killing Brutes are the Energy Sword, the Shotgun, and the Brute Shot. Other than that, I just had some moments where I would die for reasons that were not my fault, and I probably shouldn't have died. There are some things about Halo 2 Anniversary that give questions. Why did they swap the assault rifle for the battle rifle? In a video I watched, the person said that the battle rifle is very overpowered in Halo 2, 
like the Magnum was in Halo Combat Evolved. I'm sorry, but I don't see it. Like I mentioned earlier, it took three clips of ammo from the battle rifle to kill a single flood. I honestly preferred the assault rifle over the battle rifle. Another question I have is why are the energy rifles that are all bluish purple color and some that have um, an all like red color? There's no other difference between the two energy rifles other than that little bit of color difference. So why is that? Everything else about Halo 2 Anniversary I really enjoy. I did find odd how the first two missions are not that long, the ones in the middle get really long, and then the last missions are pretty short. Some people do and some people don't like the way Halo 2 ended. Given that I've already played Halo 3 years ago and will again once it is released on PC, I don't swing one way or the other about the ending. There are some additional weapons like the Covenant Carbine that are pretty nice but you don't get a lot of ammo for it and can run out pretty quick. The beam rifle is cool but it overheats very quickly. It, but it is a good counterpart to the UNSC sniper rifle. I really did enjoy playing the campaign for Halo 2. The story was very good, the characters are all really good, and the gameplay is pretty decent. Obviously Xbox One people have been able to play Halo 2 Anniversary for a while, but this is a first for PC players, and truly a first for me personally. So the question now is what are they going to do with Halo 3 when it joins Master Chief Collection on PC? The only recent news that I've been able to find dated May 10th, 2020, is that they're beginning testing on Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST in the coming weeks, and that came directly from 343 Industries. Of course, two days later, Halo 2 Anniversary joined the Master Chief Collection on PC, so who's to say how many weeks out testing will begin? The article also says that they think that ODST will release alongside Halo 3 because ODST doesn't have its own multiplayer, and I would say that that would be the best way to do it. I think that if 343 Industries gets the ball rolling on testing sooner rather than later, we could see Halo 3 and possibly Halo 3 ODST released in a matter of one to two months. <coughs> Halo Reach hit the PC in December, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary hit the PC three months later in March, and Halo 2 Anniversary hit the PC two months later in May. Given that, I would estimate that sometime in July or maybe August that Halo 3 and possibly ODST might release on PC. Do not take that as solid word though. That is just my guess. Either way, I'm looking forward to Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST whenever they do hit the PC. I can't end a video about Halo without saying that I still think they need to put Halo 5 on PC either on the Master Chief Collection or a separate release on Steam. Please don't just put it on the Xbox app thing on PC. I need it on Steam. I don't care if others don't like it. I want to be able to play Halo 5 before Halo Infinite releases. That's all I have to say, so if you're out of the conversation, leave a comment below. As always, thanks for listening, and goodbye.